Good evening, Key Biscayne. My name is Andrea Aga. I'm the village manager. I'm so happy to be here with you this evening. Uh, tonight, we are sharing with you our plans for some drainage and parking improvements along Fernwood Road as well, Fernwood, uh, Fernwood and Village Greenway. Um, basically, the survey that the village puts out every other year um, indicated that the parking was the largest impediment or barrier to our residents accessing the community center. And although it's closed now and we're working on a, on a phased reopening and things are going to get back to normal for us, uh, we have been working on the design for plans um, to make some changes to the way that parking is going to work on Fernwood. Um, it will be increasing the number of parking spots. We have also included um, really important drainage infrastructure in the design to help with some of the flooding that we experience behind the community center along Fernwood. Um, and the other element of this project that we're excited about is we are looking to implement some public electric vehicle charging stations. Um, so this evening with me tonight, I would like to thank Councilmember Petros for joining. Thank you. Um, and we also have Todd Hofferberth, our Parks, Rec and Open Space Director and Jake Ozeman, um, our public works director and BZP director. I'd like to thank Jake off the bat for doing the design in-house that saved us uh, tens of thousands of dollars. So thank you for that. And I'd also like to congratulate and thank both you and Todd for the coordination and collaboration on this project. Um, the COVID-19, we've been all playing sorts of all sorts of different roles. And I think it's beautiful the way you two have really worked together on, on the handoff on this project. So. Todd has taken the lead on some of the community engagement. Um, for folks who are on the boundary of the project, we hand delivered some door hangers um, to your homes that explain what the project is and provide contact information to the staff if you have questions. So this evening, we are going to play a little video that we created that addresses and explains what this project is with regard to the parking. Um, and then Mr. Ozeman, who's an engineer, is also going to walk us through um, the plans and the drainage and the parking and the EV stations. And I will also point out, um, thanks to Councilmember Petros, when we walked her through this project recently, had a really great idea that we have incorporated in the um, bid documents, which basically adds a new a new technology. Um, Jake brought it over to my office the other day and we st stood on it and worked with it. And it's, I don't know, maybe four or five inches thick, a very durable um, material that allows, it's entirely pervious and you can actually plant either artificial turf or, or real sod um, within this material. So not only does this enhance uh, drainage through structures, it creates more pervious space. It adds um, parking, it was designed in house, it will be um, delivered soon. And this is our opportunity to integrate any feedback and let folks uh, know what we're doing. So, with that, um, Mr. Kulpa, if you could play the video. <laughs>
Fantastic. Thank you. And thanks again to Todd for curating that video. And with that, I will turn it over to Mr. Jake Ozeman, who's going to share his screen with us and walk us through the plan details. Jake. Thank you. Good evening, Um, we did a good job on um, kind of illustrating what we're trying to accomplish. Um, as the manager stated, uh, we have a of parking spaces uh, near the center. And Firmer Road was a good candidate to uh, convert existing parking spaces to um, a different configuration and gain additional uh, spaces with minimal disruption uh, to, to the current features of the road itself. Um, so what we did was we, we, we had internal meetings. Uh, this um, uh, discussed about before my arrival to so this place with Todd, uh, the initial idea. And uh, we talked about it and I laid out some conceptual plans and then we, we kind of figured out the 60 degree parking, uh, angle parking is, is best suited for this road uh, for the following reasons. Number one, the current parking is uh, regular spaces, uh, parallel parking, and it takes uh, an immense amount of space in real estate and, and the least efficient parking configuration. Uh, the second issue was the current, the existing full size parking spaces was taken by the golf carts and, and used inefficiently as well. Um, so when we configured 60 degree parking back in angle parking was, um, we, 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 we thought about uh, the, the safety of the residents and, and, and the park goers. Um, as you travel northbound and firmer road, direction to the right hand side of the screen um, you will go and and you will stop spot spot if empty parking space and back in and and the video illustrated when, when the car parked in and when the doors are open if the kids were jump out of the car and then run the doors will naturally stop them from going towards the road but let them uh, channelize then go to the park so that's that's the that's that's one of the safety issues and also parking after you parked it when you're ready to leave you basically just pull out and look at your left and if there's no car you proceed and you move on so it's it's safe on the both ends versus hidden parking uh the easier in the beginning when you're parking you just you negotiate a turn if there's no incoming traffic you park in but when you're coming out there is no way for the driver to see uh, who's coming on a firmer road and, and, and creates an extremely dangerous situation. Um, there will be some learning curve to the residents. I'm sure there will be some residents traveling southbound on firmer road and will do head and parking only. And, and we'll try to do this for education and signage. And, uh, but I'm sure um, you know, everyone will, 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 will uh, understand and, 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 and value the benefit of 60 degree backing parking. I'm going to start from south end of the project and kind of go a few block by block of parking lot and then go over each detail. Um, the one thing that I want to point out, um, this current, I'm just going to uh, highlight this area. This is the, the highlight area. I believe we have two handicapped parking spaces and it's underutilized. What we will do is even though the design plans do not depict this, We'll have a change order. It's a basic striping change. We'll create um, golf cart spaces. We're going to relocate handicapped spaces out of here. We're going to locate a more north central location where it's more needed and, uh, and it fits better. As we go north, as you can see, we have five uh, parking spaces full size. And then in following, we have 10 golf cart spaces. Um, and then the reason we 
created these spaces for the following reasons. We could not do the full parking spaces here because we'd have to cut all these mature trees. We would lose about uh, one, two, three, four mature trees. So we kind of worked out that we preserve the trees at the same time uh, we provided golf cart spaces. And I believe it's important to provide a good mixture of golf cart as well as full size spaces so that um, everybody has the space available mixed throughout for, for their vehicles. As we go north, we have um, full parking spaces. Wherever we have some conflicts in this area, we have electrical box that we cannot relocate. We created golf cart space, so we took advantage of that. And then as you go north, we have more full size parking spaces. Um, this is as we um, approach this at intersection, again, we have full. We have, we have two compacts. This is not as small as golf cart, but not as big as full size. We have two compact spaces. Going north, we have a mixture of full size, compact, and golf cart spaces. Again, uh, the geometric and existing conditions of, of the roadway itself was a big driving factor on where we decided to put golf cart space versus um, pool. And then as we go, again, we have some parking aisles that, that we took advantage of, we have electrical boxes or, or street license installed two years ago. We could we're not locating uh, or we are we are minimizing the location of uh, infrastructure. Now we have not decided yet. Uh, but very likely that there's two current existing parking uh, handicap spaces, maybe somewhere around um, this location. Or uh, maybe a little bit north. Uh, perhaps this location, but this is um, has no bearing on cost or schedule of the contract. It's basically striping one the parking space will be striped and then um, handicap signs will put also handicap on. We are gaining approximately uh, a total of about 42 uh, additional space. So that's a good number. Um, I am going to go to Three disposition plan. We are not removing any mature trees. However, we are relocating some palm trees. Now, uh, for example, in this area, you could see the trees are labeled with a triangle in the center, number 10, 12, 13, 14. For example, um, the one that's triangle here, number 14, is moving here. Uh, the 13 that is here, moving here, and uh, 15 moving here, so on and so forth. So we, we'd be keeping everything on site. There's no trees that are being cut, only there are some palm trees that are being relocated. Also, I'm going to go on the drainage improvements of this project. Okay. From a road, uh, we have some flooding issues there that, that we wanted to take advantage of this project and, and, and resolve it. Um, we are providing um, exfiltration trenches. Um, it's not that clear in this plan on this screen, but as you can see, there's a um, 70 feet exfiltration trench right north of West Hedder Drive. And then we got another 81 feet in here. Um, and I believe we have some on the south end as well. And we have some manhole structures and a piping that connect all. Now, there is an alternative that, that we bid out and got pricing. Um, 
Um, I just want to show this one real quick. This there'll be a signage throughout the project. It's going to depict uh, uh, that this is vacuum parking only and golf cart parking spaces will be delineated as well as um, uh, compact spaces. Now, um, but when the bid package went out, we, we asked for two alternatives. Uh, the alternative one, this is actually an alternative, I can, I can go over this one. This is a, basically the entire, uh, the parking space is gonna act as a drainage basin and, and will be self-sustained. And it will also take some summer runoff from the village green. Um, it is a, this gravel hatch area is shown as a number 57 stone, 12 inch. It's a reservoir. And then on top of it, it's about two inch thick, true grid, uh, permeable paving system filled with synthetic turf or improved equal. So we are given the idea that this is what we want, but, but, but we kept the door open. And if the contractor wants to come up with another proposal that fits the criteria, we are open to it. That's why we call the proof equal. And I'm going to show some pictures um, that um, gives you gives you an idea of what this would look like. Um, this is actually uh, the cross section illustration of um, the system. You have the number 57 stone underneath, that's your drain reservoir. Uh, you have the fill in here, this is the system, uh, interlocking grid, it's 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 uh, plastic, and but it's, it's made for, it really have a uh, tractor trailer parked on top of it, and then it will uh, take the pressure. And you could have fill with uh, synthetic turf, or it could be natural grass, both works. Um, some of the pictures that there's a whole bunch of pictures there's online. This is another area that grass parking and actually the, the entire area that you see in this picture is same paving system. This is just gravel fill, the roadway itself to delineate it and the parking space is green. Um, there is another one here, similar. This is with synthetic turf. Um, so there are a lot of applications that, 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 that's out there that we can, we can choose from, but the idea is to, um, have, uh, permeable and self sustained drainage. In addition, um, let's see, we also, the other, the other alternative we bid out throughout the project was having the same parking space with permeable pervious concrete. And uh, the pervious concrete function the same way. It, is, uh, 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 it has 12 inch number for seven stone for a drain reservoir, but you uh, have to put about nine, in, nine inch of uh, pervious concrete, it's more concrete, more hardscape versus softscape. Uh, synthetic turf or natural grass is more easy to eye. Um, and more green space. So uh, I think it's, it's our recommendation to the department to, to go with uh, uh, synthetic turf or natural grass, but uh, the village council will be the one who's deciding when we present the item for approval. Um, that's all I have and um, I'll, I'll be here to take any questions. Thank you, Jake, for the overview. Um, Todd, is there anything else you wanted to add? Yeah, uh, well, let's see, because I, I did get some comments from people while uh, canvassing the area, putting out the door hangers, but maybe if we go to Q&A and they're present, I let them make their statement. If not, then I'll represent them after. Okay. So, Pete, do we have anybody who has any questions for us? At the moment, we do not have anyone from the public in our Zoom room. Okay, Todd, why don't you go ahead and walk through some of the points that were brought up and what our responses are. Sure, um, I discussed this with Jake, but there was a request for an additional uh, speed bump or traffic calming between 
uh, on the, the first section uh, by, uh, by the community center. There's already two speed bumps there, but the, the neighbor felt uh, that he's at 414 Fernwood that they do pick up quite a bit of speed and because of the traffic that's there. That was his comment. And then on the other end by the dog park, Ginny Vowles asked if we could put some landscaping um, adjacent to the last spot to, to kind of soften the view from where she lives. And I, I told her, I think that'd be a reasonable request. We could do that outside of even the scope of the project. Okay. Understood. Yeah, right up. Okay. Speed bumps we can address. We have to run by the county and get their approval and then see if it fits the criteria. We'll also have to run by a fire department to make sure it does not interfere with their response time. From the road is one of the roads that they, they, they take, uh, but we'll certainly um, uh, start the conversation and make sure. And maybe I'll, I'll have that gentleman talk to his neighbors and see if there's okay. unanimous consensus because I don't want you to go too far. Based on the intersection, the length of uh, two intersections of the Fermi Road, speed bump here and West Headed Drive, it's very unlikely that it's warranted. Mm -hmm. It's such a short distance. You actually will have, if you do stop drivers too quickly, then they intend to speed up between the speed bumps and it becomes uh, even more dangerous. So sometimes less is more. However, we'll look into it and see if there's a... Uh, there's a warrant for um, speed up the bump. And I think actually this type of parking is its own traffic calming as well. I was going to say that too. <laughs> is that it, Todd? Is that it? it. Or, okay, so it. Um, can I just ask a few questions that I think residents might want to know so when they're watching this, they can get clarification? Please. Um, Jake, could you confirm about the actual width of the road. Is the road going to get any narrower because of the construction or will it stay, stay, the, stay the same width? It's staying the same width. And I'm going to show you um, this actually line is the, the current edge of parking, the gutter line. Okay. And then yes. the old work is actually being done on the east side of it. So the road is not getting any, 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 any reduced, uh, it's staying the same. When do you also, Todd, I think you could confirm that the running path in the village green is not impacted in any way. And is there a change in the sidewalks? I believe there's somewhat of a change, but the running path remains untouched. Is that accurate? So I'll ask you both. Right. Sidewalk is, it's, it's changed a little bit because we are extended parking in some of the areas towards village green uh, and we are providing connections. The running path stays intact. We're not touching the running path. And the last thing that I would ask is when do you expect to start the project, assuming council approves things and how long do you expect the project to take? So how long do the people that live along that street, can they anticipate a disruption and are you staging it along that street? Okay. Uh, we got, uh, the, the bids were due last Wednesday and uh, we, 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 we received I believe uh, eight or nine bids. So that's, that's actually very good news. So we got very competitive numbers and, and, and there are some differences on the numbers on the alternates. Uh, procurement department is complete in due diligence and uh, we negotiating with the low, lowest responsible, responsible contractor based on selected alternate, which will bring, uh, uh, before the council, I believe on October meeting. Um, and then at that time, depending on which, um, uh, if the council approval, we move forward, we, we can start the project within two weeks of notice to proceed. So I would say um, November 1st, shall we the ground. Uh, we did say that it's no more than 90 days. At the same time, we do not want 
more than 50% uh, of the parking space is disturbed. So that while the, while the construction is going on, there are parking spaces available for the park users and residents in the neighborhood. Um, so I'm hoping by Christmas, this is done, providing that gets approved on um, October meeting. All right, thank you. I wanted to also thank both of you or all of you for putting this forward and also making alterations so that we have more options on, on how it looks and hopefully a positive impact on drainage and making that a priority as you looked at this is how we can build the resilience into it. So thank you. Oh, I, I forgot to mention, now that you mentioned the word resiliency, mm. <laughs> EV charging. Okay. Mm. Okay. So this is, um, we, we, we would like to incorporate uh, car charging stations. Um, we are looking into uh, what method we're going to go with, whether the village owns it or there's some administrative decision that needs to be made, but I'll just address the technical area. This is the location that we have our current uh, um, service center. This was recently installed uh, for firm with street lighting. And um, I would say that it would be uh, most cost beneficial for us to install uh, EV car charging station in this block of the parking. And then um, we could install a few there and then we'll, we'll decide to how much of demand there is. And also um, it's a good location. Um, actually this area that I bubbled and um, so we, we are looking into uh, which vendor we want to go with or whether we own or maintain. Again, some administrative decisions we made, but that also will be incorporated in this project. Great. Council member, any other questions? That's it for me, thank you. Thank you. Pete, do we have anybody from the public who has any questions for us at this time? Nobody at the moment, Madam Manager. Thank you, sir. Well, that concludes our presentation. So we are going to, we have recorded this. We're going to be airing it on channel 77. We'll share the link uh, to the video once it's processed. And as we move through the process, if there is anybody who has any questions or concerns or wants to reach out, uh, we're all available to you. So thank you very much for your time this evening and have a lovely night. Take care. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Andrea. Bye, everybody. Bye now.